Alrighty, sorry for the delay there. Just getting the link posted on the um, Facebook group so that those of you who are joining can watch. And I'm just going to pin that to the featured portion at the top, and that should be good. Hooray, hooray. If you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching on replay, you can say replay. Now I'm noticing that the video on my end looks a little bit blurry. And that could be just how I'm viewing it on YouTube. But sometimes I can get it to focus a little bit if I do this. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if that helps. All right. So let's get that out of the way. Let's move my laptop out of the way so we got some room to work. I'm going to scroll down so I can see your comments. And so if you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. I see Heather is here. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Thursday. 3.30 demo. We're going to be looking at our featured collection for the month of January again from the new January-February catalog, which is the Let's Party collection. And we are going to be using some of the pattern paper, stickers, coordinating cardstock, some of the acrylic shapes. We are also going to be using a stamp set that's in this catalog which is way over here on page 42, which is called Tailgate Greetings. And of course, that was one that just happened to, you know, get into my cart when I was putting in an order. And so we're going to be using that today. Then from our core catalog, we're going to be using some embellishments. We're going to um, be using the titles and these titles are available in all sorts of different colors of acrylics that you can see here. They're also available as a black die cut and a wood grain die cut and those are poster paperboard, sorry, paperboard cutouts. So I'm going to be using the black um, die cut titles as well as I'm going to be doing a little bit with a stencil and that is coming from stencil pack number two, this set here that has all the beautiful animals and prints, um, some brickwork and clocks, and then some florals and different things. So I'm going to actually be using this top one here that has the brickwork and the clocks and whatnot. So you're going to see a little bit of that. And it's kind of going out of the box for that stenciling. So it's good when you have a tool that you can find different ways to use that tool, a little bit, a little bit different from the norm. Now I'm going to be starting with something a little bit different than what I usually do, and that is I'm going to be using a piece of um, yellow, specifically yellow. I'm not usually a yellow loving base page person, but I'm going to be using yellow. And this is the Sundance, which is one of the coordinating colors. And I'm going to be using it on the light side. So you see how this is the dark side. That is the true color for Sundance. And this is the lighter shade. So I'm going to be using that lighter shade. I'm going to start off by adhering it down with a little bit of adhesive just in the center. Adhering it. Oh, look, I got a sequin coming along for the ride. A little clear sequin. Um, I'm going to adhere it down to my Versamat like so, so that it doesn't shift around while we're doing things. Hey Heather, nice to see you're watching. And my mommy's here too. Hi mom. And Allison, you made it back. Hooray! So the first thing that I want to do is the stenciling. And it's always easiest to do that first because, you know, you get, you got this nice canvas to work with. So I have here this um, stencil from stencil pack number two that has the brickwork, it's got a ruler, it's got a clock and a couple hands for the clock, it's got an interesting border here, it's got a little title here that says life is measured by moments in time, a little swirly bit, and um, I'm going to be using this clock, but I'm going to be using it a little bit differently than one would normally think of using a clock. And So I'm going to grab a sticky note 
just so I can cover up any bits that might in, inadvertently get um, get uh, get messy. <laughs> it might get messy, and I'm going to kind of come. I'm going to come in about an inch from the edge, and maybe right about there. So I'm at maybe nine and three quarters on the top of that. And I want to just put my, um, I'm using this as a mask because we've got some little bits of stencil that are not related to the stencil I'm using. And I don't want to get ink going in those spots if I don't need them to. There we go. Okay, now I've also got stuff parked here at the top of my desk that I'm going to be using and it's kind of making my stencil ride up. <laughs> if there's certain things in life that you don't want to ride up, a stencil I guess is the least of those things, but you don't really want your stencil to ride up. I'm going to be using jade ink for this. I had, I had seriously thought about using the bluebird for this, but then I did a little test, and it's always important when you're using ink and you're doing some ink techniques to think about what that color will do when it's on top of another color. So when I tested the Bluebird on top of this yellow Sundance, it actually changed the ink to green because yellow and blue make green. And so then I decided I would just go with green. So I'm going to use the jade, which is one of the coordinating colors. I've got my blending brush here. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink all around this clock face. Now, you think, why are we doing a clock? We're not doing a clock. We're actually using our stencil as a design. Whoops, and it shifted on me. I wasn't holding it very well, but that's okay. We're using it as a design element. It's not actually going to end up being a clock, but I like the idea of that sort of radius, radiant look that it is building. And so I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna do a little bit more. We're gonna come over here, right about there. I guess we're at few things that are snagging there. We're coming up about eight inches from the bottom and we're going to stick that down. And again, I've got my little masks around here. I don't necessarily have to do the entire um, circle, so I'm just going to kind of go around the parts I know I need like that. And then let's do one more. We like threes don't we? With all of our paper crafting, we like threes. So let's just go ahead and maybe we'll do one. Which, what direction do we want to do? Maybe we'll make it go down off the page. But I need it to be just right on the edge because not a lot of it's going to show. So okay. we're right about there. I don't want to go too far off the page because I'm not using my all-purpose mat. Smarty me should have had my all-purpose mat down here to uh, contain the mess. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. I'll wash that later. Get rid of our ink and our blending brush and all of our little masks. <laughs> kind of tidy up our area. So there, we've created kind of a fun design. So this doesn't have to look like a clock. This can just look like a pattern. And I could have even taken the same stencil, shifted it just a tiny bit and done a secondary color and created an even more intense ring. But I kind of like where we're at with that one. Now, one of the gorgeous pattern papers in this Let's Party collection is this one here that has all these beautiful swags. There's circular swags and there's triangle swags, there's dovetailed swags. And in between each row, there's also a little string of like little pom-poms in very faint white on top of that ballerina background. Now you can see that the bottom of this has been fussy cut and you're gonna see why 
I didn't want to make you have to uh, sit and watch me fussy cut for, for a whole banner full of little flags. But I wanted to give you that idea that instead of just using a piece of the paper, you could do some fussy cutting on this. And I know a lot of you take one look at that and go, there's no way I am fussy cutting those little banners. But it does create a really cool line of little flaggies. So we're going to go ahead and stick that on the layout. And I'm going to use liquid glue for this to make it a little bit easier. And I don't necessarily need to glue down every little pennant. So I'm just going to kind of follow where the string would be. Because if we get a little bit of lift on those pennants, you know, a little bit of 3D effect, that doesn't hurt my feelings whatsoever. And we could even be a little bit crazy. We could put this on with foam tape, that kind of thing. But that takes a long time to get all those little bits on there. So we're just going to come in with the glue. And now this is the hard part, is getting it on there. I'm going to come down a little bit from the top. And now it should line up from side to side like that and then we can just stick it down easy peasy look at that no time at all <laughs> of course the fussy cutting was already done ahead of time we, we, won't, we won't talk about that <laughs> so you can already see it looks a little bit celebratory these are kind of looking a little bit like fireworks and um, and then we've got our pennants but this is not going to be a birthday layout hey laura nice to see you're watching and um so this is not a birthday layout. This is not really technically any kind of formal celebration whatsoever. And you will see why when I bring in the photos. But before we get there, we're going to we're going to leave the reveal for that for a few minutes. We're going to come in with some more pattern paper. Now this is the pattern paper I used this morning for our little um treat bag loot loot box type um, paper crafting and now I'm using it again and again it says yay but this is not a birthday so let's add and let me see I didn't even measure this I just pulled it out of the bag it's four and a quarter inches and obviously 12 inches across so let's add some adhesive on the back of this like so now I was contemplating using some glitter paper or some shimmer trim on this. And I think I kind of talked myself out of it. Um, I don't think it needs it. <laughs> so that changed where I was kind of figuring on putting things. So I'm going to put this about an inch from the bottom. An inch from the bottom? Yeah, about an inch from the bottom. And just lining that up all the way across. And then I'm also going to bring in one of the zip strips from this collection that has these tiny little black and white dot pattern. And I think it's really cool. Plus, it makes your eyeballs do really weird things <laughs> if you look at it too long. But I like that there's a little bit of black on this because we're going to have some black in other places. So it's nice to include something else that has that. And it's all sticking to my fingers. I'm going to stick that down, just following the edge of that pattern paper. Now, my paper seems to be moving, even though I stuck it down with adhesive. <sighs> all right, let me just, I can't see the comments and the layout at the same time. So every so often I have to kind of just check and make sure that we're still somewhat in focus <laughs> gonna give it a little focus moment there okay so let me see are we at the revealing of the pictures part yet no not yet not yet we're going to take a look at this tailgate greetings stamp set and it's got the back end of a truck it's maybe a little bit older looking truck you know a little vintage but then it's got some larger words, love you, hello, thanks, so you could do thank you. And then it has all of these little um, 
sentimenty, wordy things that can go on the license plate of the truck. So it's got love you to pieces, 16, XOXO, way to go, HB2U, which means happy birthday to you, just in case you didn't know, I had to look that one up one time, classic, you're number one, great dad, miss you, you rock, best dad, blessed, hot rod, enjoy, you're great, hugs, lots of fun things. And then there's this nice little stripey, almost like a danger stripe, um, borders type stamp along the on the along the way there so we're actually going to stamp this truck but we're going to do it a little bit different because we're going to stamp on black cardstock wherever i put oh it's in, <laughs> forgot where my cardstock was because it's already in here we're going to stamp on black cardstock because i have a black truck and so that makes sense but in order to do that we're going to use some heat embossing so let me just carefully walk my stamp off the carrier sheet. There we go. We're going to put it on our cardstock so we know it's going to fit. And I'm going to use my um, stamp platform for this just because it's a larger stamp. And it always just works out better that way for me. Got my Versamar ink. ink. I've got my anti-static pouch. We're going to give this a little... A little swishy swishy with the anti-static pouch and that keeps our um, embossing powder from sticking to everything. We've also got our white embossing powder, Versamark ink, and a scrap piece of paper that we can dump our embossing powder onto once we have stamped it with the Versamark. Sorry, got a hiccup. So let's go ahead and ink up our image. Do, 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 Hey, Deborah, nice to see you're watching. Hello, hello. So we got some Versamark on there. I probably didn't need to stamp on that that many times, but, you know, I was looking at the comments. Then we're going to go ahead and stamp that down, lift it up, and you won't really be able to see much of what I just stamped because it's Versamark and it's clear. I can see clearly now the Versamark is on there. Okay, now we've got our embossing powder. All we need to do, I like to hold my paper up at a bit of an angle. And kind of let the embossing powder fall across it. And then just tap, tap, tap. And because we did that anti-static pouch, we don't have too many stray bits. Sometimes just giving a little, a little puff of air on there will help and then we can dump all of our excess powder back into the jar there we go <clears throat> put our lid on nothing worse than spilling your embossing powder well there's probably worse things but we don't want to do it and then we're going to bring in the heat tool give it a little minute to heat up caution gets hot it's not a hair dryer and intended for craft use only. Always good to know. And then we're just going to hold our paper up from our work surface so we don't overheat our work surface because you never know what the finish on your table might do. And it also helps the air, the hot air, to swirl around your paper, making it react a little quicker. And then just as the heat gets on there, it's going to melt that embossing powder and go from dry and powdery to shiny and lovely and you just work your way around making sure that everything gets embossed so fun all right there we go easy peasy i love watching heat embossing i don't know about you but definitely one of my go-to things. Now, um, if we want to put something onto our license plate, we're going to need to heat emboss it, or we need to do a little bit of um, thinking outside the box. So what? that's what I did. I thought outside the box, and I've cut a teeny little piece of white daisy, because we're in Ontario. We have white plates with blue lettering, and this has been cut to just a smidge under three quarters of an inch 
by just a smidge under three eighths. Like it's a tiny little piece. And when I was um, practicing this, I actually stamped the truck a second time on onto white and cut it out just to figure out what the size was. Um, but it works. All right, so we've got our little piece. I'm just gonna set it there to do the stamping. And we've got some Bluebird ink, which is the coordinating color here. And let me grab a little block. And this, the little word that I want to put on mine is your number one. And you'll figure that out, why I'm using that when you see the photos. I'm just keeping you in suspense about those photos, I tell you what. All right, so we've got the little tiny your number one to go on our license plate. And we're gonna dab, dab, dab. Make sure we haven't got too much ink everywhere to get all over our layout. We're gonna stamp it in the center. Your number one. There we go. Got our little personalized license plate already. And then now <laughs> you can see we've got some of the anti-static powder on there. So my fancy way of removing that is to just rub it on my pants. I'm wearing a pair of jeans, so it all just kind of, it kind of works. <laughs> so we've got our truck now. All right. Now, in order to um, use this truck, I want to fussy cut it out. I believe you can get this stamp set with a thin cut, but I'm just going to cut it out with me good old micro tip scissors. We're going to go around, we're going to leave a halo of that background cardstock. And we're going to pivot our paper. And when we get too much paper, we just snip off to the edge. And continue on our way. This is not necessarily a hard image to cut around because it's very um, blocky. It's not really intricate. I mean, the most intricate is this part here by the, the side view mirrors. And you can hear it flicking as the paper hits my hand as I'm pivoting. So that's when I know. Time to cut to the edge. I didn't do a rough cut on this before I started. It usually does help to do a bit of a rough cut. And we'll just go all the way around. Come down the other side. Who's liking this little truck? I think it's super cute. I think it's also cute that you can cut it out on the pat on the cardstock that matches your vehicle if you have a truck, or the vehicle that you want. If you don't have a truck, you can make up one. Now I could fussy cut this right on the line and then stick it onto white daisy and then, you know, do all the things to make it look more like a sticker or a die cut. But I'm just going to just going to leave that the the base cardstock around. Now, I do want to cut out my window here, and that's because um I think it will just make it look more like a truck if I do this. So, I've got my precision blade and I'm just going to leave a halo like I do everywhere else and use my Versamat here because this is a self-healing mat so you can use a blade on it. Now you can't go crazy with your blade. My son borrowed my Versamat one time many years ago um, to make some um, sets and design things for his Warhammer game and he was using a box cutter. <laughs> And he took chunks out of my Versamat. And then he, when he showed it to me, I said, ooh, that's not going <laughs> to, that's, that's going to leave a mark. And he said, I thought you said it was self-healing. And I said, well, I said it was self-healing, not self-replicating. <laughs> if, if you take a chunk out, it's not going to grow back. So, yeah, I got a couple new Versamats after that. So there, we've cut out our, our little window. Uh, for the front of our truck. So even though we've got the back of the truck, we've kind of got that view through. And then we've got our little license plate here that's color coordinated for Ontario with the white and the blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive on there. And I'm actually, because of my sausage fingers, 
going to use my um, tweezers for this just to line that up in the spot where I want it to go because otherwise I would never get it lined up. So there we've got our your number one and it's actually going to hang out over here now. Now's the time you get to see. Um, <laughs> hey Claire, nice to see you're watching. Hey Laura, yes, those scissors, best scissors, best scissors ever, best tool in the craft room. Now you're going to get to see why why this mystery of what photos I'm using is, is going on. So I don't know if this is, um, if this store is available everywhere where y'all might live, but here in Ontario, we have no frills and it's a grocery store chain and their colors are yellow, red, blue, and black, which are exactly the colors from this paper collection. And it's kind of a family joke-ish thing that mom has a favorite parking spot. <laughs> I know, I keep telling my kids, you know you're old when you have a favorite parking spot. And sometimes there, there's, they have like a first place parking spot, a second, then a third. And after that, if those three are not available, I have been known to leave the parking lot and shop a different day. <laughs> For one, I have a truck. Trucks don't always fit into a lot of spaces in more modern parking lots because they're too long. It needs to be a pull-through parking spot. It needs to be at the end of an aisle so that if you get parked in on one side, you can still get your doors open to put your groceries in. Like there's, I don't know, if you've ever watched The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon has this whole philosophy of why he sits where he sits in the room. So this is like my Sheldon version of that, but with a parking lot. So at the little no frill store that I shop at every week, there is one favorite parking spot and it's right near the cart return. There's two spots and then there's this last spot right here where there's no spot in front of it. It's like a weird angled one that's marked off so nobody can park there. So it is a single parking spot on the end of a row so you can get your doors open even if somebody parks in this spot and you can pull out and it's like my favorite spot and it's every time I pull in there and it's available I do one of these like woohoo yay <laughs> my favorite spot I know I'm old uh it's it's a thing so the other day I went and I was like I you know I seriously need to take a picture of me being happy about such a weird thing that my favorite parking spot was available, but it does. It makes makes the whole shopping experience that much better. And I don't know about you, but you know, shopping is not one of my favorite things. Grocery shopping is not one of my favorite things. So having those things that make the experience just that little bit better, um, it's worth noting. And I thought, you know what? I say this to my kids all the time. You know, you know, your mom's old when she has a favorite parking spot. So I might as well celebrate it and do a layout, right? <laughs> so so here we go. And we're going to mat it with a bit of white. And then we're going to add a little bit of black. And I think that really ties in with our um, heat embossed truck over here that has the black and white. And it tones down some of that bright that's happening with the yellow and the pattern papers. And kind of makes it make sense. Plus... You think about lines on a road are quite often black and white, although in this, you know, in a parking lot, they're yellow in this one anyway. And so anyway, that's the scoop behind these photos. And, you know, sometimes we don't often think about those everyday moments, those everyday things that just make life that much more <laughs> livable sometimes, you know. And, um, and it also is often that we forget to scrap the mom things, you know, about ourselves, those, um, those things. So I think this will be funny, like 40 years from now, if my kids look at this page, they'll be like, oh yeah, right. Remember when mom had a favorite parking spot and she was always so weird about it. Yeah. I hope that this will be a happy memory for them. <laughs> 
Anyway, so we've got um, a four by six and a four by four. And I'm gonna kind of just use all my little bits here as a little bit of a placement um, guide. I'm gonna put this one straight. I wanna have enough room for my little truck there. So I think that's where I want that one to be. So that's about nine and a quarter inches up from the bottom. Gonna add that one on there. And I thought it was nice to put that pattern paper across the bottom with my zip strip just to give a nice horizontal grounding to this uh, collection of photos and also of the truck just to give it all a spot to sit. And let's see, hopefully that's somewhat straight. This second one I'm actually going to put on a little bit of an angle just for funsies. Why not, right? <laughs> Why not? And let me see, I want my little truck to be kind of like that. So I want my photo over here. So obviously my center photo is not in the center. That's on purpose. Put that one on a little bit of an angle. And then this guy, I think I'm going to pop him up with some foam tape. I just thought of that right now. So let's grab some foam tape. Stick some of that on here. I hadn't thought about that before, but just with those double mattings, kind of makes sense to have a little bit of height here. Don't need a lot. There we go. And this stamped image now becomes a really cool embellishment for the page, but it also carries some weight. So that kind of counteracts the photo on this side. You kind of got to think about how much things weigh when you're um, not, not by weight, weight, but by not weight, weight, but you know, you know what I'm saying, by how much presence they have on the page, right? <laughs> Now, for um, denoting that this is a very special parking spot, uh, I've also got a little strip of this pattern paper that we're going to tuck underneath our truck here. And let's grab some more foam tape for this. I'm going to use the thin foam tape so it's not as thick as that truck. And I don't remember what I cut this to. I think it was just a random piece that was in the bag. Let's see. It's about a half inch by three and three quarters. And I stuck that on weird so it's a little warpy, but that's okay. But what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck this under our truck, line it up with the edge and have it overlap onto our photo like that. So it's kind of, it's touching the actual photo parking spot and it's making it look standout-ish, you know, like the, it almost looks like those um, light up floors from the discos, right? <laughs> the checkered floor. So it's like, boom, this is the spot. It's almost like when you pull in the parking lot and you drive up to it, it's like, oh, ah, you know, the rays from heaven. So the, for the title for this, I'm going to be using the black die cut titles. And one of the titles is The Best. So, you know, that's what we're doing, The Best. And so in order to stick those on, I'm just going to add some glue to my hand. You know our trick. Glue on your hand. Use the tweezers. And we're just going to tap in, tap off, and stick it on. So what we're doing is we're going to put this title, and hopefully I spell it the right way, going backwards, inside this sort of little um, spot that we created with that stencil. And then it kind of is like, poof, like the rays are coming out. It's the best, the bestest ever. Does anybody else have a favorite parking spot? Am I the only weirdo in the world? <laughs> Deborah says she always parks in the same spot at the mall. So that you remember where you park. Yes, that helps too. I have an, the, the parking spot behind this at the end of the next aisle 
I'll park in the parking spot where you just pull in. And if you can't pull all the way through, you at least can pull in behind because then you can back out and go around the end. So you don't have to back out all the way because my big truck won't, doesn't fit in the aisles. You can't back out all the way and swing. So I never pull into a spot unless I can pull through. <laughs> Claire, do you have a favorite parking spot anywhere or is that just me? Usually people who have big vehicles know what I'm talking about. People who have, um, you know, more compact vehicles are like, what, what's the big deal? <laughs> they just don't know. They don't know the agony of getting stuck in a spot where you can't get out. And then you feel like a weirdo because you're making like a 17,000 point turn to try and get out of a too tight spot. And especially you feel like all, you know, all the guys in the parking lot are like, ah, she just needs to let me get behind the wheel. I get her out of there. <laughs> so I don't put myself in those positions. I just avoid them all together. Alrighty. So there we go. We've got our the best. So you can see that this layout using that let's party uh, collection is not a party. Well, I mean, it's a party for me. Woohoo! <laughs> um, but it's um, kind of thinking outside the box for that collection. And it's mostly just because of the colors. Sometimes the colors just drive it. All right, now I have some of these acrylic shapes from the collection. You can get a pack of all the fun Let's Party acrylic shapes. And I've pulled out a few of these little sort of pom-pom bursties to incorporate. And we're gonna add just a couple here, kind of along the, um, along this sort of ray, just uh, to give it a little something, a little something, something. And there we go, we've got three of those stuck down using these uh, micro glue dots, which work really good for sticking down acrylics. There we go, and then we're gonna hit the sticker sheet now. Because on our sticker sheet, we've got some fun stuff. And first off, I want a couple of arrows. So I'm going to use one arrow to point to best, because it's the best. And then I'm going to use this yellow arrow so it matches in with the, the lines to point to the spot. Mom's favorite spot in the parking lot. Gotta have it. <laughs> A few times I've actually been sitting in a less than favorite spot waiting because somebody is loading their vehicle and I know they're going to leave <laughs> and I will actually wait in my truck as long as it takes till they move and then I snag that spot. So weird. Such a weirdo. All right. So we've got some. We've got the woohoo. <laughs> we've also got happy day. And feeling old, because I tell my kids, you know, you know your mom's old when. <laughs> so the woohoo, happy day, and feeling old are, um, are all very applicable. So let's put a little bit of woohoo up here. And I'm actually going to, there's a random stranger there. And so instead of having a rain, random stranger's face, I'm going to just cover that up. And we're going to add the, mm, yeah, we're going to add the happy day there too. Happy day. Woohoo. But this feeling old is going to come over here. We're going to add that right there. Feeling old. <laughs> you know, you're old when, and then I'm also going to grab this line of stars and stick that, I'm going to use my tweezers, just under, actually, I'm going to put them over here. I was going to put them just under there, but I think I want to put them over here to kind of bulk up this little, uh, this little design we added down there. So we're going to put a couple little stars there like that. And now I've left some space here where I can put some strips of white daisy cardstock and do some journaling on there. 
So I will do that. But there we go. We've completed our layout. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Grab our rub and remove eraser to take off that little bit of adhesive that's on the back. Wing, 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 wing. There we go. Nice little ball of adhesive we can throw away. And now no more sticky. Can go right in our album. So there we go. We created this layout. We started out with our Sundance cardstock and did some stenciling with that clock. Doesn't look like a clock now, does it? Our clock from the stencil pack number two from the core catalog. Then we layered up with some fussy cut pattern paper and some just straight cut pattern paper, a little bit of zip strip. We did some heat embossing on black cardstock to create our black truck because I have a black truck. And of course, personalizing our license plate, your number one, because this is the number one parking spot. Adding in our die cut title with those black die cut um, titles pieces and some stickers pointing to all the good things. And also our extra little words, happy day, woohoo, feeling old, <laughs> the best. And um, of course, some little acrylic embellishments. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, feel inspired to think outside the box when it comes to your stencils. Think about using colored cardstock as your base. Think about fussy cutting out things from the pattern paper and um, just kind of putting things together and thinking outside the box in terms of a collection. So this is not a birthday. It's not an anniversary. It's not a retirement. It's not all the things that you could celebrate. It's just me being happy about my favorite parking space being available at the grocery store. <laughs> I hope you feel inspired. We will see you again soon. Don't forget we have chat and craft this evening starting at 7 o'clock and we'll be posting a Zoom link for that when it happens. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Toodaloo. Bye.